Well, I want to share, everybody has a, a go-to, don't they? Right? I mean, if you think through your restaurants, your favorite restaurants, your favorite date nights, your favorite Netflix shows, which I'm sure you're all binge-watching right now at some point, we all have our go-tos that we're used to. In fact, when Becky and I, when my wife and I were dating, one of our big go-tos as far as a date night was Outback Steakhouse. I know, I took her to a great, nice place, didn't I? So we would go to Outback Steakhouse anytime we had a big date or some big news, exciting news, um, went to Outback Steakhouse. Now, later on in life, now that we have our three kids, our go-tos have actually changed a little bit. So now our go-tos include Chick-fil-A on Monday night, Firehouse Subs on Wednesday night, O'Charlie's on Thursday night, and Steak and Shake on Saturday night. Now, if you're a parent, you know why those are our go-tos. If you're not a parent, let me, in, let me get you in on a little secret. Kids eat free those nights at those restaurants. So we have found some new go-tos all because of something familiar, something that met a need for us, but it's something we go back to again and again and again. So this morning, in the midst of all the difficulties and the trials that we might find ourselves in, I wanted to just share with you my personal go-to, one of my personal go-to, my comfort verse, if you will, or comfort story. If you have your Bible, if you'd open to Mark chapter 4, we're going to start the story in verse 35. Here's the story that we read, and again, this is a personal go-to for me. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. But a furious squall, a storm, came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Circle or underline that word, swamped. It was not just a big storm, not just waves coming in and over the boat. No, this boat was about ready to go down. This boat was being swamped. They couldn't take it anymore. Verse 38. Here's Jesus' response. Jesus was in the stern of the boat, sleeping on a cushion. While all of this was going on, Jesus was asleep. The disciples woke, woke him up and said to him, Teacher, that's an important word. We're going to come back to it several times. Teacher, don't you care if we drown? Jesus got up. He rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. There's that question that Jesus asked his disciples in the midst of all this was going on and he quiets the storm finally. The disciples thought they were going to drown. The boat was going to go down. And Jesus asked this question. And it's a question I want you and I to ask ourselves. Why are we so afraid? Where is your faith? And it's interesting that Jesus chooses to use those two words. He says, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Those are those two words we want to wrestle with this morning, because I have no doubt we are currently wrestling with them this morning. Faith and fear. And it feels like it's a tug of war between the two, doesn't it? It feels like on one side I have faith and I claim to have faith and I want to have faith and I'm striving to have faith and I'm trying to grow in my faith, so I'm being pulled towards faith. But then on the other hand, there's the realities of our world, the, the difficulties, the storms that we're facing, and there's so much fear associated with it, it tends to pull us away from our faith. So we find ourselves in this tension, this wrestling match of faith, maybe the desire for more faith, but then the realities of our fear, and the realities of our fear that seem to pull us away from our faith. So this morning, I'm sure you can even comment below, we want to have faith, but there's a lot we're afraid, and we could spend all day talking about all the fears that we all have and the fears that we're facing, the unknowns and the uncertainties and the unexpected. So how do we wrestle when we're stuck between the desire for faith but the realities of our fear. Let's pray and we'll go to God with just that. Jesus, we come before you and you know our hearts and you know the, the condition and the realities of our world. Nothing surprises you, nothing throws you off, nothing shocks you. But we are not that resilient at times. 
So Jesus, as we go through your word this morning and we study a familiar story to me personally and a meaningful story to me, and I hope for all, that we would wrestle with this tension between faith and fear. And that your word would speak clearly, that your Holy Spirit would be loud in our hearts and in our minds on how to move towards faith, even in the realities of our fear. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's talk about those words for a second. Faith and fear. Let me explain faith briefly. Faith is not just blind faith. Well, I just believe whatever I want. I believe what everybody tells me. That's not it. Faith is more persuasion. Faith is having confidence. So when we say we have faith in Jesus, we're saying we are fully confident. We are fully persuaded that Jesus is exactly who he says he is. We are confident in him and in his abilities and in his strength. All the things that we just sang about just a few minutes ago. We are confident in him. That's faith. Now fear, on the other hand, a different way to think about fear is asking yourself this question. What pulls you away from that? What limits or hinders your confidence in Jesus? So if our faith is confidence in him, our fear is anything, is anything that causes us to second guess the realities of Jesus. So once again, we're pulled between the tension of faith, but also fear. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go back through that story, and I want you to see how fear crept in into the disciples. Even though it was a reality, there's a big storm. We're not ignoring the storm. We're not ignoring the realities that we currently face. There's a lot to be worried about, no doubt. But how do we have faith through the midst of the storm? So I want to highlight just three ways that fear creeps in, and you're going to see it in the story. The three of them are, first of all, the unexpected. What in the world is going on? If you didn't see it coming, you could not have expected it, and because of the unexpected, we're thrown into panic and worry and fear. The next one is the uncertain, and you say this phrase, what if, fill in the blank. Anytime we start to say, well, what if, what, what's going to happen? I don't know what's going to happen. Everything feels uncertain. Everything is uncertain, and it leads us down the road of fear. And the last one is the unknown. Who's in charge of this thing? <laughs> Who's leading this? Who's guiding this? Who's, who's paving the way for this? Who's taking care of things? And when we don't know who's in charge, it leads us once again down the road of fear. So be looking for those, the unexpected, the uncertain, and the unknown. Let's start with the unexpected. Let's go back to the beginning of the story. That day when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with them. Here it is. A furious storm came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. No expectation of a storm happening. Fishermen would not have gotten into a boat to cross onto the other side if they knew or expected a major storm to happen. They would have said, you know, it's better for us to wait. But they had no clue. It says that it was evening. They decided to go onto the other side. Jesus was even leading them that way. They would have expected a nice Calm night going across the lake. Reality sets in, the world, the life happens, and their world gets changed and turned upside down to now what they were expecting to be a nice calm evening has now turned into a life and death situation. They had no expectation of there being a storm that they were about to sail into. So for you and I, we expect certain things throughout life, don't we? We expect things to go a certain way. We all have our expectations. Even if they're not vocalized and spoken, we all have these internal expectations on how life is supposed to go, how our life is supposed to go. So let me encourage you. It's not going to feel like much of an encouragement, though. Change your expectations. We expect things to go the way we want them all the time, but that's not the reality. In fact, Jesus tells us something very different that probably doesn't line up with your and I's expectations. Here's what we're told in John 16, These are Jesus' words. Jesus says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have, and if you're watching online, say it even if you were here, peace. That in me, Jesus says, you will have peace. Not in the situation, not in the absence of trouble. No, in me you will have peace. He goes on. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Jesus says something that's fascinating to me. He uses the word trouble and peace in the same breath. Did you catch that? He said, no, in this world you will have trouble, 
But he says, in me, you will have peace. So can we change our expectations just a little bit to not expect everything to be perfect all the time, but to expect there to be trouble? Jesus tells us to expect trouble. But how does that fit in with faith? Well, what does he say? In me, not in the world, not in perfect situations or circumstances, in me, you will have peace. You see, peace is not in the absence of trouble. Peace is in the presence of God. That's what Jesus is helping his disciples and us to not just know, but to truly take to heart. So take heart. Jesus says, I have overcome the world. Even though it's unexpected to us, it is not unexpected to him. And our peace is not found in the absence of trouble. Our peace is only found in Jesus. So there's the unexpected. What in the world is going on? We're asking that a lot today, aren't we? Well, may we find our peace and our comfort in Jesus, not with the world working out the way that we would expect it to. So there's the unexpected. Let's look at the uncertain. Remember the key word for uncertainty? What if? Look for the if statement as we continue through the story. So there was a furious storm that came up. The waves broke over the boat. It was nearly swamped, nearly drowned. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The the disciples woke him and said to him, teacher, don't you care? There it is. If we drown, don't you care? If we drown, they were expecting to drown. They didn't think they were going to make it through. And so they wake Jesus up saying, don't you care? Because this doesn't look good. We don't know how we're going to make it out of this alive. Don't you care? If we drown. Uncertainty. What if we start playing the what if game, don't we? What if my kids are out of school? For another week. I'm just telling you, man, my kids were out of school. Friday had nothing to do with coronavirus or anything. It was just a day planned for all of the kids to be out of school, professional day for teachers. I don't know how long we're going to be able to make it if our kids stay out of school for very long. (laughs) What if they don't go back anytime soon? What if the stock market continues the direction it's going up and down and up and down? And, And what if the doctor gives us bad news? What if I lose my job? What if I can't pay my bills? What if we run out of toilet paper? Which, by the way, we as a church are here to help. If you need toilet paper, just write TP in your comments and we'll see what we can do about it. Just kidding. I don't know if I can help you on that one. (laughs) What if? What if? See, our mind swirls around that phrase, what if, just like the disciples' minds were swirling around what if. But I want to point an obvious point out in this story. So they said, don't you care if we drown? We don't know how this is going to work out. But if you back up to verse 38, it says, Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. Here's the question. Forget if he's sleeping or not. Is Jesus present in the boat? Yes or no? Yes. He is there. He is present. He hasn't gone anywhere. That's what I would want you to hear this morning. Even in the midst of uncertainty, even in the midst of the what if, please don't miss this, in the midst of the what if, Jesus was still there. See, when there is uncertainty, and we are feeling the uncertainty right now, you can be certain of this. Jesus is with you, just like he was with the disciples. In a chaotic panic-stricken moment for the disciples in the midst of the storm when it was most uncertain Jesus was still there that has not changed he's with you and he is with me in the midst of the uncertainty he is still with us please don't make the mistake of seeing the storm and assuming God's not present please don't make the mistake of just because difficulties have have arised and troubles are present don't make the mistake of allowing your mind to think well if the storm is here god must not be in the midst of the storm jesus was right there in the midst of our uncertainty he is still with you and me so the disciples had fear because of the unexpected they didn't see it coming they had fear because of the uncertainty what if we don't know what's going to happen next let's look at the unknown the last part the fear the disciples felt They said, teacher, don't you care if we drown? Verse 39, so Jesus, he got up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. 
he looked at his disciples and he said, why are you so, there's our word, afraid? Do you still have no faith? Once again, the tension between our faith and the fear of the current realities. But here we go. Look at verse 41. They were terrified. And they asked each other, the disciples, they asked each other, who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. That one question at the very end, who is this? The disciples still had no idea. Who is this man? Who is he? What is he doing? What's he all about? And the fear of the unknown has now crept in. Because notice, it says they were terrified. It's kind of funny that they were terrified in the midst of the storm. Then they were terrified after the storm was calmed just because they don't know who Jesus is. They're still scared. They still have fear. They are terrified. But this time because of the unknown. They don't know who Jesus is. Now, let me point this out. I told you to circle or underline teacher. We said we were going to come back to that. Here they said, who is this? This man that just calmed the waves and calmed the storm. The wind and the waves obeyed him. Who is this? Well, if you go back to verse 38, we see who they thought he was. The disciples woke him and said to him, teacher. That's important. Don't miss that. The disciples were in a boat in, a, in the middle of a storm with who they thought was just a teacher. Now, no disrespect to any of our teachers out there. I have full respect and am so thankful for our incredible teachers. However, if I find myself in a boat in the middle of a storm and about to be drowned, no offense, but I don't want a boat full of teachers necessarily. <laughs> I want a lifeguard. I want a captain. I want a boat mechanic. I want somebody that's going to truly be able to help me. And the disciples had to have been thinking the same thing. Here we are in the middle of a storm and we're stuck with a teacher. What is he going to be able to do? To the disciples, Jesus was still just teacher. That's why they said, well, who is this? The wind and the waves obey him? Are you kidding me? This is, this is a teacher. Who is Jesus to you? Is he still unknown? You might believe in Jesus, but what do you really know of him? Do you truly, deeply, int intimately know Jesus as more than just teacher? Or is Jesus just teacher? Is he a good idea? Is he a religious figure? Is he somebody that you grew up hearing about? Is he friend? Or is he something more? Because to the wind and the waves, he was Lord. The moment Jesus said, quiet, be still, that was not a suggestion Jesus gave to the wind and the waves. It was a command by their creator. And the moment Jesus said, quiet, be still, they obeyed as they listened. Jesus is so much more than just teacher. He is so much more than just friend. He is those things. But don't miss, he is Lord. He is king. He is creator. So once again, I ask you the question, who is Jesus to you? In the midst of all the unknown, who is Jesus to you personally? To the disciples, he wasn't Lord yet, and they were terrified. We find our comfort in knowing who Jesus truly is. You see, the more you know Jesus, not just know about Jesus, the more you know Jesus, the more confident you will be in him. Remember what we said about confidence. That's what faith really is. It's confidence in him. It's fully persuaded that he is who he says he is. That's what pulls us in our faith. When we find ourselves in the tension between faith and fear, may we have our confidence in who Jesus truly is, that he is Lord, that he is king, that he is our rock. He is Lord. So this whole, this whole morning has been about finding comfort. We read that out of 2 Corinthians, and we've read through that story in Mark chapter 4. For me, this is, like I said, this is one of my go-to stories when I'm in the midst of difficulty, stress, and trouble. I'm reminded of who Jesus is, and I'm reminded of the realities of fear, but also the realities of my faith and the faith that we have because of our confidence in Jesus. What's yours? 
What is your comfort story, your comfort scripture, your comfort verses? We go to familiar things when we need to be comforted. So what are yours? I'm going to put a bunch of verses on the screen for you and maybe be ready to take a screenshot or a screen capture of these. Here's just some ideas. Here are some suggestions on some comfort verses that hopefully you would find comfort in. So like I said, take a screenshot of these, take a look at these. This would be great for you to go through this week, in fact. Go through each of these today and later this week and just start reading through the different verses, trying to find your personal comfort verse. It doesn't have to be one of these. The Bible is full of comfort verses. Remember what we read? God is the source of all comfort. He is the God of comfort. So I promise you, the more you get to know Jesus, the more you will find confidence in him and the more you will be comforted. But find your comfort verses. Hold on to those, especially in the season of life that we find ourselves in. When we see all the fear around us, can you also hold on to the comfort found in Jesus that we find in his word? So again, this week, spend some time going through those verses. Discover, find your personal comfort verse and hold on to it. I'd encourage you, put it on your mirror in, in the bathroom. Put it on a post-it note, a post-it note in your car. Talk about it at the dinner table. Put it on a piece of paper on your nightstand. Do whatever you have to do to go back to that verse again and again and again. I want to do something a little bit different for you. And I want to encourage you to take me up on this. If you're multitasking, stop multitasking for a second to the best of your ability if you've got kids in the room. <laughs> if you're trying to eat breakfast and everything else, just give me, give me two minutes and just stop whatever it is that you're doing. And I want, to, I want you to focus on a few key things here. If you can find a spot, if you're not already, sit down. I want you to close your eyes if you can. And I just want to breathe and read scripture over you for a moment. I don't want you looking them up in your Bible. You can look them up later. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to listen with your heart and allow God, our Heavenly Father, the source of all comfort, to give you comfort. Psalm 91. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Psalm 144, he is my loving God and my fortress, my stronghold. And my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge. Psalm 62. Truly he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress and I will never be shaken. Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? If your eyes are still closed, let me ask you this one question. Who is Jesus to you? You have to answer that question personally. In the tension between faith and fear, you must answer that question. As you open your eyes, I want you to wrestle with that. Who is Jesus to me? I can tell you for me personally, he is my Lord. He is my rock. He will never be shaken. He is stronger than me. He is my Lord. He is my King. He is my everything. I hope and pray you would be able to say the same. In the midst of the unexpected, in the midst of the uncertainty, in the midst of the unknown, and all the fears of our current reality, He is with you. And He is with me. So do you know him? Do you know Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior, as your King and as your rock? Last verse I want to leave you with. Many of you know it. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures and he leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Maybe that's just what you needed today.
was for your soul to be refreshed. He goes on, he guides me along the paths for his name's sake. Even though, here's the most famous part, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Don't miss this next part. Why? Because, say it with me, no matter where you are, because you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Mountain Lake Church and anybody watching around the world, in the unexpected, in the uncertain, in the unknown, Jesus is Lord. And he is with you wherever you are. That doesn't change. Let's pray together. Jesus, we come before you. Fears swirling around our hearts and our minds. We don't know what is coming next and we don't know always how to deal with what is. So may our hearts and minds and souls be filled with the promises of you and the realities of you. That in you we put our hope and in you we put our faith and in you we put our trust. If there's anyone out listening that hasn't had the opportunity to say those words to Jesus, I pray you take the opportunity to do that today. I trust Jesus with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength and with all my mind. Some of you need to re-up in that trust. I've trusted, but maybe I've been bending more towards fear than I have been faith to regain the confidence you once had in Jesus. I trust you again and again and again. Jesus, you are my go-to, we say. So Jesus, we come before you, whether giving you our, our trust for the very first time or whether we are coming back to you again and again and again, we put our trust in you and you alone. Grow our faith. Give us comfort and draw us close to you. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name.